It's a war outside. It's a war outside. It's a war outside. And everybody acting like they don't see it. Black owned business. Support Delenciaga, nigga. Black owned business. Give me your money, nigga, so I can go buy me a mansion, nigga. Black capitalism, nigga. All you niggas out there working 16 hours a day, nigga, in the fields, at, at, at Amazon in the factories, nigga, at Tesla in the factories, nigga, at McDonald's, nigga. All you teachers out there working 18 hours a day, nigga. All you students barely getting by, nigga. Support my black business. Delenciaga, nigga. Put money into my pocket, nigga, so that I can get a fat ass house. So that I can take my nieces and nephews on vacations and shit every year, nigga. So that I can buy Hennessy and Patron, whatever the fuck I want. So that I can quit this organizing shit and go live lavishly. Support black businesses, nigga. Straight up. Bank black, nigga. That's what I want. I'm a black business. Support me. Support hella black, nigga. Put all your money into this shit, nigga. Straight up. Nigga, fuck your Robin Hood account, nigga. Go to Bible Black. So, so I can go buy <laughs> go property. To our Patreon, so man. I can go buy property in Oakland, nigga. And fucking uh, call it, what is it? What, what do you call Affordable housing, nigga. So I could be your slumlord, nigga. Make me your landlord, nigga. Fuck these crackers. Let me be your landlord, nigga. Niggas need a black, black, black on land or black on landlord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me, nigga, fuck, nigga let, let me be the black police officer that shoots you in your motherfucking head, nigga. What you mean? Let me be the black judge that slammed that gavel and give your little brother 30 to life. Let me do that. Come on, you don't man. need a white man to do that. Let's push you can have a black man named Delancey do that. Shit. You have a black man from Oakland, California do that. Black shit, man. You see that nigga fade? You could have a nigga with a fade do that. Yeah, don't <laughs> let that, that long, blonde hair, blue-eyed devil do it. Let me do it, nigga. At least with I'm a white. black man do it. You see that sweatshirt? Come on. <laughs> it's his own sweatshirt. Come on. <laughs> he owns it. Come on. Bank black, nigga. Support black businesses. <laughs> Support Delanciaga LLC. <laughs> buy Delanciaga, yo. Go <laughs> buy all my records, nigga. So that I may, in turn, go put that money and team up with the other black elites and, you know, open our schools and shit, you know, <laughs> invest into our private prisons, invest in the ankle monitors. Let me do that. Let me live in my mansion, nigga, off my hard-earned money, off my hoodies that was made in the sweatshop. Let me do that. Let me be the nigga that go and get me a mansion. Help him start his Robin Hood account. Once I get this mansion, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell y'all that you could do it, too, if you exploit the people just as well as I did. That's you know all what? you gotta After do. After that, you might be able to get your own network. That's all you gotta do, my nigga. The Delenciaga network? Come on. True. Come on. You nigga. know what? After you make it up, you can sell it too. Shoot. And then you know what? After you do that, you sell the no. company and then you sue the company for no. stealing the this, likeness of your this, shit. This is what Just I'm like about, P. No. Diddy did. No, this is what I'm about to do. This is what I'm about to do. I'm about to sell hella sweatshirts. I'm about to sell hella sweatshirts. But then I'm gonna open a storefront where I pay my workers $10 an hour. And bro. I'm not gonna give them health care. Bro, those are tips. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm so I'm a, so when I get this money from these niggas supporting my clothing line, my all my black owned clothing line, Delenciaga, I'm gonna open a storefront once I once I make enough money from exploiting the working class, then I'm going to exploit the working class myself by putting the same infrastructures. I'm gonna pay niggas minimum wage or barely minimum wage. Um I'm not gonna give them benefits. And oh yeah, definitely make sure they're a private contractor. Yeah. yeah and then so, and then from there where they're trying to unionize, I'm gonna tell these niggas if y'all don't do it, somebody else will. And, and then maybe you'll change the stoplight times, you feel me? So, you know, basically they can't show up to the union meeting and shit. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, as I've, tactics, bro. As, I've, tactics. as I've exploited the working class and made them give me money so that I can open this storefront and then in turn give them jobs, which are exploit, <coughs> exploitative. Um, from there, I'm going to continue to exploit. And while I go up and up and up, the only time I'm going to fuck with them is when I need something from them or when I can exploit them, right? So when I need y'all to buy my products, that's when I'm tapping in on my black shit. Uh, when I need y'all to, when I need to hire y'all niggas so that I can give y'all less than livable, livable wages, that's when I'm gonna fuck with y'all. Um, and then as I continue to grow and build my own brand, I'm gonna partner with other black elites so that we can in turn combine our exploitative, our exploitative uh, efforts to make us an entire empire. Um, yeah. And so I just think that's, that's I think that's that the sounds best way to like go you're probably it. gonna get an invite to the White House and uh, sit down with Kamala yeah, Harris. I think that's the best. And way Joe to go Biden's about it. a black business plan. I think that's the best way to go about it. You know, Richard you know. Nixon would be very, very happy to hear what you're saying right now. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think I'm, I'm gonna make niggas proud. So, you know, it, it it'll be a a long, not difficult journey for me at all because all I'm gonna have to do is sit back and yeah. you know plan. It don't 
the planning of exploitation isn't nearly as grueling as being exploited. So it it will be it'll be decent for me, but for y'all, it's gonna be a lot of work. And I hope y'all ready. But at least we can be able to say you got a Balenciaga hoodie, and that y'all supported a black man. And you could say black businesses matter. They do. You know they do. Small black businesses matter. We're gonna make him a big black business now. Shout out to Visa, Mastercard, J.P. Morgan, the, the NFL. NFL, Roger Goodell. <laughs> Inspire change, baby. <laughs> Uh, hello, black. <laughs> if you can't tell, we are we are no longer uh, socialists. We are we are full on black capitalists. This Black History Month. Mm-hmm. And my black business matters. So go to patreon.com slash hello black pot and tap in. Go run it up, nigga. They gonna say, well, why we gotta uh, why we gotta pay for for y'all content then? If y'all so anti capitalist, nigga, I am the general proletariat. Which is the general working class, y'all? I'm not exploiting y'all by y'all distributing five dollars a month to my <laughs> podcast. It's not exploitation. These niggas are socialists. Why are they raising money to get paid for for their rent? Because nigga, we don't we not supposed to have houses. That's why. That's what socialism means. Socialism means There's we don't no have a house, house. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It means we all no water. We either, all live right? in the streets. Oh shoot. We all eat porridge. Socialism also means no clothes. <laughs> we all eat porridge every day. You know, that's that's what it means. Oh uh, shit! It would be funny as hell. I, you know, somebody if this was the first episode somebody uh, listened to. Mm-hmm. Man, I really tapped in with Hello Black, and it was like probably like, oh my god, these niggas are serious. And somebody was probably like, damn, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That's how you get a black business. <laughs> uh, but you know, we got a good good episode in store today. You know, we're gonna talk about. Um, what is really a black owned business under under capitalism? Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk about black capitalism. We're gonna talk about capitalism and, and what it really means and, and define these terms, you feel me? So we can all learn together and have a full understanding of, uh, about what what these motherfuckers is pushing on to us this, this Black History Month and, and how capitalism, you know, in a lot of ways is co opted Black History Month, like we was talking about on our uh, Black Radical Month episode, you know. Um, but before that, man, tap on our Patreon, patreon.com slash hellblackpod, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, you feel me? Wherever you get your podcast, we well, is probably there. And if we ain't there, we somewhere else, you feel me? But, you know, make sure you go to Apple Podcasts, get that five-star review. Fuck with our Patreon, you feel me? Help, help support this this black radical tradition, you feel me? The shit that we following. Uh, so, yeah. Black joy. Black joy. We haven't done we this haven't in done a while. This shit. I know and some niggas sense. been commenting. It makes sense. <laughs> some niggas been commenting like, We're, "Don't forget about Black Joy." I ain't happy, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can start it off. Fuck! I thought of you know me starting off saying Black Joy. Hey, what's the other Black Joy? <laughs> um, Is that banging being picked up outside? No, nah, I don't no. think so. Uh, shit, you know, construction and gentrification. <laughs> My Black Joy. Was definitely going to Tahoe and hitting the slopes. And uh, yeah, that shit was cool. Just getting out, hitting the slopes, and uh, being in the snow and shit. That shit was fun. Um, it's always good to get away if you can, especially during these fucking pandemic times. You know, niggas just been in the house almost for a whole year now. But that was nice being able to, to do that. Yeah. What about you? Damn, my nigga, I, it's been a rough two or three weeks for me. I'm not about to use this as a as an opportunity to, uh, you know, vent and or what is it called when you like trauma dump on people? Is that what it's called? So, I don't know. It's I don't, know, I don't like know what the term is these days, but you know, niggas got a word. For trauma everything. dump. The niggas got a word and a catchphrase for every <laughs> every single type of <laughs> shit that go on these days, niggas. Um, <laughs> uh, fuck trauma dump. Oh, it's a safe space, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas can say how they feel if you want my, to. My dad turned 49 yesterday. Shout out to him. I uh, think that's dope. Oh, last week I had I had uh, dinner with two of my younger siblings, uh, which I which I really enjoy. Just you know, linking up with them. It's been difficult to. <laughs> Stay on, on stay on top of my relationship with them, um, as it's difficult to stay on top of my relationship with all my siblings, just because of you know 
the older ones working hella much, me working hella much, and then the younger ones probably feeling like a little bit disconnected, you know, with their own stuff they got going on, but also like, you know, Age. When I'm older, it's like, can this nigga actually, like my, I'm sure my 16 year old sister is like, can this nigga actually relate to what I'm going through? Um, and so just being able to, to break bread with them. And then I played, I think I played 2K with my little brother for a little bit. And then we played WWE. I don't know if that's what it's called or WWF, one of them motherfuckers. One and 2K. Nigga, for one, he wouldn't even play against me. For me, that's my little nigga. He like, we we'll play, we playing on the same team. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. Like, I, I think I used to do that with like my dad and shit. So it's just, yeah. I love my family. So, I, yeah, my family brought me joy. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, I remember that, that that gave me like a flashback to playing playing uh, like FIFA and shit and with my like little brothers and shit. You actually would be on the same team for a while and then they get old enough and then you would play against each other yeah. and shit. I actually don't think my dad used to play on the same team as me. Actually, like, I'm like I remember my dad. I have this vivid memory of me being in the back of my grandma's house in that back room, um, and I think we was playing like on PlayStation One maybe. So it probably was like live 1998 or some shit. And I just had this vivid memory of my dad, like, having his head back, like, crying, laughing, like, fucking Eddie Murphy and Nutty Professor. Because um, he's beating my ass in, in uh, I, I can see it. <laughs> in live. And I just thought that shit was so cruel. Like, bruh. Like, nigga, I'm seven years old. Why are you doing this to me? Like, bro, this is supposed to be quality time. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? But, yeah. I don't do that to my brother. I play on his team. I don't do that to him. <laughs> Uh fuck. But yeah, we got a good good episode in store for y'all today. Um I think one thing we've been trying to do, especially as we um thinking about how we teach people and, and, and have the best tone when we teaching people is really like try and break everything down um at the most like root level of it. You feel me? So like, you know, a lot of times when you know uh, one episode we talk about political education. We talk about political education all the time, and it took us ninety some episodes to actually define what political education means to us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, or at least in like a, a kind of like quote unquote layman's terms way. Yeah. I feel like sometimes we just assume that our audience can meet us where we are in our understanding of um, you know the world, and that's not always the case. So I I think it's definitely important for us to try to strive to. Uh, you know, break shit down as simple as possible. And it's hard with this. I mean, we both got educator experience, but like with this kind of medium, as far as like, it's different. you got an yeah. hour you gotta to knock th- it out. Yeah. Or you just, you know, me and you talking, you feel me? Yeah. Which We're is- going to talk to each other how we normally talk to each other. Yeah. Like that's, that's part of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, I think before we talk about like what a black owned business is under capitalism, it'd be important for us to, to even define uh, capitalism. Mm-hmm. So how, how would you define capitalism? Um, f- of course they have like multiple definitions. I, of course, I mean you have like the Webster dictionary definition, <laughs> and I have like my own definition. Um, and I've seen like other, um, what would you call it, like radicals, revolutionaries, whatever. I don't know what term I want to use, but for me, capitalism is a, is an economic structure that allows the elite slash ruling class to control the means of production. Um, And by production, I mean, like, actually, like, the the accumulation of goods or the production of, like, goods, but actually the people who... who, The factories. The factories, right? The place where... where, How the the product is brought in, how the product is distributed, um, where the product is made, and the workers at each stance. Um, So it's it's about a controlling of of the goods and the productions and the services, but also the controlling and exploitation of the working class. Uh, so that's how I define pro- uh, yeah, capitalism. Definitely. And I think also when we're talking about like America, we got to talk about like settler colonialism and how that uh, plays a part in, in capitalism, right? So the same people that own the means of the production are also the same people that quote unquote own and control the land. You feel me? Um, that's why it's like every revolutionary movement has always been about land and it's always been about controlling the resources. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's what, you know, when we talk about freedom, if you ain't talking about land, if you ain't talking about resources and you ain't talking about the means of production, you ain't really talking about freedom talking because about the shit that oppresses us, you're talking about inclusion. <laughs> you feel me? Exactly. Yeah. You're talking about oh, inclusion, diversity program, whatever you want to call it these days. Um, but we are in a fight for land. That's why we say free to land. You feel me? We're, we're in a fight for people to be free from the economic um, oppression of capitalism. That's why we say free to people. Feel me? Mm-hmm. Like we we need the land to be free. We need the people to be free from these um, economic systems that uh, oppress us. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's capitalism in a nutshell. Um, definitely another reading I would recommend is What Is Marxism All About? It's a, a guidebook that is uh, fairly uh, more simple to understand than <laughs> picking up a fucking Marx or Leninist, you feel me? Um, but it gives a, a very simple definitions, in my opinion, that, that helps you understand how this, this society uh, is framed mm-hmm. or worked. Yeah, that, that's a good, like, a good starting point. And it, it touches, like, so many things. Not as in, like, it's, it's just a good, a really good starting point. And yeah. It allows you to break down capitalism, socialism, communism, uh, the working Dialectical class. Dialectical materialism, you know, yeah, lumpen like, proletariat. I remember all those words, like, I think when I first started reading that, shit, I'm like, I was probably 18 or 19. I'm like, what the fuck is all this shit? I don't actually don't like the use of those words. Like, yeah. I'm like, why do we have to say this? Like, There's you can other just ways say the working say, class. Yeah. Like, the general lumpen, lumpen, the general proletariat. It's like, that's just the working class people. The lumpen proletariat. It's just like the poor. But I guess that was the only way that, you know, certain people the the read it. It, yeah. it was the times. Because they also wasn't making it for poor people to read that shit. Or the general proletariat. They wasn't making it for them. Yeah. I mean, then then that's like you know sometimes terms become outdated, mm-hmm. you know, and we have to uh, explain terms in the way we would understand it. You feel me? Like, I think that's how important. It's like, nigga, if that ain't a language that we speak in, yeah, we should know how to speak that, or we should know what these terms mean. But put it in the terms, you feel me? That that we understand. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or that is a language that we actually speak. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, we bring up capitalism because. Uh, we're going to address black capitalism again on today's episode, yeah. just because me and you've been seeing a lot of shit, uh, especially like it was heavy during the Super Bowl, right? Um, and then just o- online in general. And of course, during Black History Month, there's always going to be this framing of black excellence from a colonial standpoint. And I think that's important as we start looking about these these things that are quote unquote black power, uh, black sovereignty, black self-determination. Look at who's defining them for us mm-hmm. and look at who's aiding us in this direction. And look you know? who's co- sponsoring it. You feel me? So Super Bowl weekend, what do you see? Support small black businesses. Who pushing that? The NFL, Visa, Uh and these banks. You got to ask yourself, why are they pushing that during Black History Month? Like, what is that? What is the goal of that? What is that going to do? I mean, it's it's to give a little, it's to give, it's to give these, uh, it's to give these small black business owners a taste of the, the luxuries that have been reserved and afforded to the ruling class to the elites it's like see like you you can do this you can do this but why can you do this because you have been backed and supported by the state by those that are in power you are not going to be one of these small black business my 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 good sis that has the um the 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 waxing business the small black waxing business sis unless you get the state back the state funding and the state backing um you're the chances are you will never be that big you will never grow into be that big large business it's just not gonna happen but what they want to do is sell us dreams of inclusion like see this person went from having this small little storefront to now they have this mass operation and yeah what does the mass operation do how are you able to even accumulate this much wealth through exploitation and that's what folks got to accept you cannot grow in a capitalistic society without exploiting someone that is how the Mm -hmm. system is designed it's designed for the for the way that you are able to increase your fucking income is by paying this person a little bit by exploiting this fucking uh, place, which is probably going to be Africa or somewhere in the global South, South America, um, for this resources, fucking cotton, uh, the, the whatever the stitching is that's put on this. Like that's how you're. It's about cutting corners through exploitation that allows you to amass this great wealth. So I say all that to say, think about what has to happen for you to actually become that place while they're pumping all this mass propaganda down your throats of supporting black business. It's like, you know, one thing I've always said uh, since like Ferguson is like, damn, a person get murdered in the street, killed, executed by the police, and then you have black capitalists and, and the white corporate fascists coming together and say, oh, a solution is banking black. A solution is small black-owned businesses to police violence. That is not the solution, bro. A black-owned like <laughs> it's all. I'm all for supporting black-owned businesses. And that's that's you feel me. That's shit we do regularly. 
But we ain't propping that up as some shit that is going to be something that's going to liberate us. I mean, through Pan-Africanism, me? we're going to be supporting black and African-owned shit because we will be, once again, the controllers of the means of production and the means of distribution. We will 1,000% be supporting black businesses. But from what and angle? And that is a cooperation. And from what goal? From a cooperation, a collective goal. From a unification. It's like, you know, we was joking in the beginning. Like, nigga, you supporting... Uh, a black owned business doesn't mean that's going to support the masses of people. I would be a fucking liar if I said, oh, by supporting our hella black Patreon, you were supporting the masses of people economically. Yeah, we might give, be giving them the political thought, but nigga, we ain't changing their life materially. The you one, the like, like, <laughs> that's, that's not what we're doing. Like, that's, that's, that's not what's happening. Be very clear who you're supporting once you, when you support hella black. You're supporting, uh, to some degree, the house's population by the percentage of money that we give to that from the tiers. But for the most part, you helping us pay our rent. You helping me pay for my little brother's tutor. You helping me pay for my grandma's cable. Like, let's be very clear where the money is going. Yeah. When you support these black owned these these fucking millionaires, you're supporting their mansions, their vacations. It's just like, it's just call it for what yeah. it is. When and you buy this though, yeah. this money went to supporting houses, folks. I did not make a dime from <laughs> this, and neither did the producer of this product. Niggas put in free labor for this period. So let's just we just have to be clear about where the money is going, and that kind of transparency can exist. Mm-hmm. Why would a nigga be transparent with you when all his lies and exploitation, or all their lies and exploitation, is what has led to their empire? Well, my nigga. You can be a black owned business, but you still exploiting your workers. You know what I'm saying? You still paying them crumbs while you is making 300% of what they is making. You feel me? So that that's the structure. But I think the importance of understanding why this is being pushed. Why is Visa getting behind this? Why is a company like DoorDash getting behind this and saying, oh, support black businesses but when you, they don't even fucking pay their black workers? <laughs> Trump change. They, why is Uber Eats saying support black businesses, support your community, but Uber is over here gentrifying fucking Oakland and fucking not p- paying their workers shit or when not, even, not even allowing unions. them to fucking unionize. <laughs> you feel me? Like, nigga, they don't give a fuck about black liberation, so we got to really analyze why is these motherfuckers pushing this shit. And if we understand our history... For them. If we understand our history and we understand even the term black capitalism, that came from Richard Nixon. The same Richard Nixon, that same fucking devil that was incarcerating black revolutionaries. And this goal of black capitalism was to co-opt the radical revolutionary movements. He literally was saying, no, we we don't want that black power shit. We just want to support black businesses for them to grow economically. Nigga, that is part of the corporate fascist scheme of capitalism to buy into this inclusion. That's what it was about. So when you get behind this whole black capitalism dogma, you feel me, this whole doctrine of that shit, understand that that's coming from Richard Nixon. A killer. A nigga who imprisoned uh, uh, black revolutionaries. A nigga who, who, who helped the COINTELPRO, CIA, FBI, all that shit that to shit destroy a fucking good. movement. And they are using these same tools today, the same propaganda machine today to do that shit. And you just got Joe Biden and Kamala Harris pushing the same type of black business initiative. Feel me? That's the same shit that Richard Nixon was doing during a movement for black liberation. This shit is has to be identified as counter revolutionary. One thousand percent. And we're not saying don't support black business. That's not what we're saying. We support that shit all the time, but don't frame it as a way for liberation because capitalism is not a way for liberation. And even talking about black capitalism, like that term itself, you you can never be a black capitalist. You don't have the capital. You don't own the means of production. You don't own land, nigga. You were not a black capitalist, nigga. You was being exploited by this fake propaganda. So if you even understand capitalism, nigga, you ain't a capitalist. You are trying to integrate into that shit, but nigga, you don't own the means of production. You don't have any fucking capital. Nigga, the bank own that shit. <laughs> that loan you paying, nigga, that's J.P. Morgan Chase, nigga. The same bank that owns slaves, nigga. <laughs> Facts. And that's why two things come up for me as you talk, right? It's like definition. Who's defining these things for you. Nixon is the person who gave you black capitalism. The person who was the um, the author of so many things that led to the incarceration and the killing and the enslavement of black and African the fuck folks. Fuck war on drugs, nigga. So the same nigga who gave you the war on drugs is the same nigga who gonna give you freedom? Can we not see the jig that is being put in front of us? You feel me? And that's why we gotta identify exactly this is what this is. This is what is happening. Well, so it's not following these same traps that started in the 70s. Nigga, it's 2021. Yeah. You know, and, and name it for what it is. These motherfuckers don't care about you. The NFL don't care about us. Inspire Change don't give a fuck about us. These nonprofits don't care about you. 
but they pushing this shit for a reason, yeah. and it's to, to, to it's to help their own piggy bank, and they, and they fooling the masses and thinking it's gonna help them too. Yeah, you know who who's providing the definitions is something you got to look at at all times, and again, like we even got to start looking at what again what what ownership means, nigga. Like, <laughs> bro, you you have a black owned business named Doenciaga. Where did that cotton come from? What is that? What is the ownership? I literally, you could have Taiwan or some shit, bro. You like <laughs> ownership? Like you don't own that cotton, Indonesia. Like, do you own the the the, the tools uh, and the factory that that made and pressed that no. shit? So, are you truly an owner? Do you truly own your business? Like, and what is ownership in a world where where white supremacist violence will take what it wants, whatever the fuck it wants to? People love referencing Black Wall Street when them crackers got fed up, they blew that shit up. There ain't no such thing as black owned when you don't own the means of production. Because the white man gonna get paid off for every little thing you was doing, or he gonna see to it, or they gonna see to it, see fit to when they want to dismantle your shit. You know, like as we think about ownership, as we think about, because eventually, again, through revolutionary pan Africanism, yeah. through the unification of Africa, is the control of our resources, is the control of the means of production, and the means to defend it. Yeah. Period. Point blank. Because when we same, do get real ownership over our our, our collective not about to let you resources, nigga, we gonna have to be able to defend that shit. Because it's to like let you keep it. Why? But really think about like what is black owned? Like even a restaurant. What's you know like breaking that shit down? Like okay, you go to uh, your favorite soul food place, nigga. Where that chicken coming from, nigga? Maybe black front facing. It ain't black owned though. You know what I'm saying? Where the where the where the chicken coming from? Is that is that your own chicken? Okay, maybe then that that's a face. That's 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 something you could say is all right. Yeah, we own our own chicken. We grow our own livestock or whatever. But that's rarely the case. There's no such thing as ownership, as long as America as the we greens grow to grow exist. Where are you getting them greens from? You getting None that shit exists. from exploited farm workers from Central California, Salinas, and Monterey, nigga. Like, do you really own that shit, or do a capitalist corporation farmer own that shit and sell it to you? Like, we don't have control over anything, bro. We don't have control over anything. These are facts. Like this, this is not. A, <laughs> this isn't up for debate. The only shit maybe is like okay, like like shea butter. Okay, maybe you bought shea butter from a, a African company, a black owned, hopefully a black company. But then, how'd you get that over here, nigga? It came out on a white plane <laughs> through UPS, and they getting paid off of that shit too. Or the plastic tub you got it in it. You Again, feel me? That wasn't made here. These niggas own the factories, the export and importing of goods, and the distribution. Every time a dollar is made in this country, the Europeans get paid off of it. <laughs> Period. Point blank. How 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 is it an ownership when when if they decide to cut your shit off, it's all it's over. Or they hit you with a regulation. <laughs> you ain't an owner in something that you can't that you that you don't have complete autonomy of how it's produced, distributed, maintained, and protected. That's or if you even have any control of the land, nigga, the the warehouse you're renting, nigga, that ain't yours. <laughs> that's a that's a corporate LLC real estate fund, nigga. They own that shit. Kick your ass out whenever they want to. Make up a reason. Eminent domain on your ass, like you know. So I think it's really important that we understand, like, what is this notion of black owned? Like, can you really be black owned to some degree? But you ain't fully black owned. We don't own the means of production. We don't. What about when niggas gonna bring up Jay Z and like black billionaires, and Oprah and Tyler Perry, who owns? Who owns uh, that whole little land where a lot of black movies are being shot now? Black yeah. Panther two uh, coming to America. Too. He didn't get any Bad of that boys. money without the white man. And I would love to see the conditions of his workers once they leave that motherfucking big ass lot. I would love to see. And what about all the resources that went into building that lot, nigga? The gentrification of Atlanta, the you removal I mean? of AT all... aliens that have been there their whole life. I don't know why. What I said about AT <laughs> aliens? That's hella funny, bro. <laughs> 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 That's hella funny. Oh, shit. That's hella funny. Oh. Atlantis. <laughs> Atlantis. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, Sean gonna be. Sick. Uh, I was about to say I'm gonna send that clip. <laughs> send that clip to them. <laughs> but I mean, even the resources and the, and the the raw materials that went into making that uh, production studio, nigga. That's probably uh, materials that are uh, extracted. From the continent somewhere. In the name of what? Black excellence? <laughs> Black excellence Twitter going up. Nigga, even... F- this shit we talking about, nigga, I got a phone on my hand that is from exploited child labor on the continent, nigga. The, the microphone, nigga. <laughs> the Zoom shit, you feel me? All that shit is from exploitation. 
We just have to. We just got to understand it as such. It is, bro. Yeah. Again, in a sea of capitalism, yeah. it's impossible to get wet. We know that, but let's just call it what it is. Let's stop acting like we're doing something so revolutionary, so liberating, when all we're doing is being Probably products of the system. Right? All we're just, we're just being products of the system. That's all I'm saying. And I can't wait till I can get to. A, I mean, fuck. I think it was Seko Toure who was able to say, like, where did where did you get your clothes from? I can tell you exactly who made my shit, where it was from, and how much I paid for it, and why I paid this much for it. You ask me where my hoodie came from, I can, I don't fucking know. Maybe Taiwan, maybe Indonesia. I don't I don't know. So even then, like I'm hoping I can get to a point in my damn self where I can cut back, you know, like reduce that for whatever reduce your footprint or whatever on like how much reduce my your shit. individual carbon <laughs> you footprint. You know what I'm saying? And to again, environmental. <laughs> and I, we was having a conversation yeah. earlier though, right? Like people love to reduce capitalism to individual acts. Yeah. Like I'm not bashing niggas who have on Nike. Nigga, we got on Nike, nigga. I'm not bashing like, you, the individual. I got an Apple Watch on, nigga. We just talking about the system. I'm not bro. bashing you, the individual. This is a collective system that's been being Enforced put on into us, place nigga. for 500 years. A colonial and system. Counting, you know what I'm saying? But we, as individuals that eventually, through unification of black and African folks across the diaspora, through revolutionary pan-Africanism that calls for the unification, as we start to have these understandings as individuals, that will better serve the collective too. But okay, we're not about to, we're not down with this shit. We don't give a fuck about black owned businesses when the at the root of them, they're exploiting the poor and the general working class. We don't care about black owned if that's what is if that's what black owned means. We don't care about black excellence if black excellence means uh, the integration of a few while the masses of people suffer into a colonial system. We don't care about black excellence if that's what it means. We don't care about black ownership if that's what it means. We we need to take we can take these definitions. And make them our own that are truly in alignment with black power and black liberation. Not letting someone like Nixon, not letting this white ruling class, this Euro, this Euro European ruling class come and define black excellence for us. As I've never seen black excellence. All I know about black excellence is that it's been defined by, by our oppressor. How well you can integrate into a system, becoming a billionaire, um, having your own exploitative uh, businesses, um, being a cop. Being a fucking being the cop who saved the capital, <laughs> like every everything about black yeah. excellence has been defined by how well you integrate into a colonial system. Let's let's re, let's refute that shit, bro, and make black excellence some African shit at its core. That's what we need to be doing. We can still own you can you but can be on your black excellence shit if you love it that much. Do it. Just make it really be in power with some black, yeah. be in line with some black liberation shit. You feel me? That's all niggas is asking. Yeah. Or you don't have to, but let's just you know say just that. don't frame it what it is, bro. Just be truthful, you feel me? Just like the way we was truthful about our Patreon, and you feel me? We truthful about owning Nike and all that shit. Like we telling the truth. We ain't saying there's no some liberation shit just because a nigga get a fucking shoe deal with Nike and that's inclusion or some shit, nigga. What? Got to name it for what it is. But the solution, you know, the solution is cooperative economics. The, the solution is pan-Africanism, where we all control the resources, where the people are in control of the resources and the people are in control of the land. And we will all benefit. The masses of black people will benefit from pan-Africanism. The masses of black people will benefit from scientific socialism. A lot of us just have these very right-wing, racist uh, understandings of socialism that has been given to us from people like Richard Nixon. The people who tell you to hate socialism is Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, Joe Biden, and Barack Obama. These are the same people giving you this black excellence shit. These are the same people giving you this black capitalist shit. But they don't want you as a people to have control over your life, over your resources, and over the continent. So we got to look at it for what it is. And, and when we become unified... And when we control the means of production, the people control the means of production. And when we control the land and when we are our own liberators, we will live in abundance. Even the black upper class, the black middle class, the black millionaires, you will benefit from socialism. <laughs> but so much. But the thing is, for so many of the black ruling class, like so much of the identity has been being positions the, as the other. As the you other know? are the best. You know, it's like the, the, the people the, don't want to give the that up. Extra, yeah, the extraordinary. Negro. They don't want to give that up. They like buy into that trope. Their identity, their self worth, has been attached to how they can distance themselves from poor Africans. Yeah, or how many fucking likes they can get on their LinkedIn posts and shit like that from you know? their fucking corporate company. And like, niggas like that's and that's why I mean it's yeah. a total. Excuse me, it's a total fucking. What would you like reprocessing of the mind, bro? Because niggas have to let go of this attachment 
of wanting to be better than. You see it the way, like, I tell them, like, I hang, I know some of these. I know some of y'all favorite black folks, y'all favorite athletes, y'all favorite musicians, y'all favorite writers and directors, y'all favorite whatever. Them niggas don't give a fuck about y'all. Y'all should hear the way they talk about niggas. They think niggas are just like, that y'all have failed at life. By being victims of white supremacist capitalism. They think that y'all have failed that life, which is why y'all are where y'all at, as opposed to 500 years of fucking racism, oppression, and enslavement. They think that y'all failed. That's how they talk about niggas. And that is, that is part of the problem right there. Like, niggas' minds have been warped to the point where they want to be positioned as the other. Ain't shit changed. You've seen it. Like, it's, it's the same bourgeoisie Negro shit. You go, it's going to continue to and see this, it. This shit ain't nothing new. It ain't nothing new either. This shit has been going on. There's always been a few that have seen themselves as better than the masses of people. There was black niggas who was endorsing Richard Nixon. <laughs> There's black niggas There's who was endorsing nigg- Trump. You feel me? Like, it's, that ain't nothing new. There was black niggas who was sellouts. Nigga Harriet Tubman tells us this. <laughs> you feel me? This has always been, you know, that nigga Q was saying, clout was always a thing. We might not have understood it as clout in the 60s or 70s, but nigga, niggas was clout chasing King and you know, left that nigga out to dry. Niggas is clout chasing these days too. It's, it's all, all the same factors are happening. It looks different because capitalism, you know, is always growing, always becoming more powerful. Um, this shit has always been a part of the history. Yeah, I think we need to dive into this a little bit more of like that kind of what is it? There's a term for it of like the I don't. It's like class solidarity with a class that you don't that you don't identify as. Like literally from an economic standpoint, like, nigga, you make thirty thousand dollars a year in your mind. You might think you fucking Jay Z, but bro, you barely getting by. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something that needs to be addressed in the, as we look at this black capitalist uh black capitalism black excellence kind of thing is y'all like, be having class solidarity for niggas who don't give a fuck about you or niggas who ain't done shit for niggas you. who don't view as, as nothing more than a consumer and or as capital you know like that's all they view you as and you have to like nigga these niggas michael jordan i got five pairs of the motherfuckers he don't give a fuck about what i got going on he's already said it like the niggas don't care all these nikes i got these niggas don't care this phone I don't give a fuck as they rape and pillage the Congo for this shit. Or what, is it the Congo? Where is it that they get the shit yeah, from? Yeah, they don't give. They don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, bro, you have. To, why ask yourself? Why do you feel so connected to someone who has shown you day in and day out? Someone who has billions of dollars, who could change the reality of your life of the masses of Black African folks right now by just saying by by the writing of a check. Or by taking certain political stances could change the way this whole world functions. And again, I, to the people that's gonna say, why are you looking for a handout? Nigga, I'm doing fine. I don't need a handout. I'm talking about the masses of people, the thousands of people that are sleeping on the streets of Oakland. I'm doing my part, my nigga. I'm, I'm, I don't need a handout from nobody. But I'm trying to tell niggas, bro, why, like, I, I just don't get it. Like, why do you feel so connected to that person? And again, it's not about, oh, you need to pull yourself up. You need to do it yourself. Or why are you always asking for a handout? I'm not asking for no handout. I'm asking for fairness. I do all the labor. You exploit me, nigga. If I'm like, nigga, Jeff Bezos don't lift a finger at Amazon. A fucking finger. You mean to tell me that the people working in the factory doing all the work don't deserve as much money as him? Why? Oh, because again, because they failed at capitalism. Well, if they would have been doing their own thing, they would have to work at Amazon. What? How does, how does it work that way? So that false class solidarity, niggas need to check ASAP. These niggas do not care about you. Man. How do a nigga that love you so much and care about black power and black excellence gonna <laughs> let you sleep on the street? If a nigga like me can say, oh, I'm about to make these hoodies and put my own money into it and, and raise money and put that right back into to people's programs. If a nigga like me who ain't nowhere near a millionaire, a hundred thousand there, none of that shit. Why can't these niggas who got billions in endless money say, I'm about to give y'all this much in the name of free housing? Not not uh, affordable housing, free housing. These niggas have the money to do that. Why wouldn't they? If, they, if you love your people so much, why aren't you doing it? If black excellence and black power mean that much to you, why are you not doing that? Because black excellence always been for a few, nigga. It been for the Oprahs, nigga. Tired of for the Jay-Zs, for these bro. You've seen, what the, you've seen the power that niggas got, bro. Judging, they just have the power yeah. to say, if they got the power to go out there and tell y'all to vote and get millions of motherfuckers to go out there and vote, they got the power to tell niggas, you know what else they got the power to tell niggas, period. If they got the money to put $10 million into these nonprofits uh, and support the businesses of these motherfucking black elites, why they ain't got $10 million to put into free housing? Again, why do we always like think about ca- how capitalism has worked, has has warped our minds to think as everything is transactional, to think that if it ain't making a dollar off of it, it ain't the right thing to do, to think as supporting your people as a handout. 
the fuck? What like? And that's what them crackers do. Everything, all these, all these the, niggas don't want to be That's just that like, far right shit, bro. bro. It's that right wing shit, and nigga, hand out this, and that's that capitalist propaganda. All these, all these crackers you see paying, paying off motherfuckers to get in, for, off the SATs to get into these Ivy League schools. All these white people you see working in the music industry, working in film, they are grandfathered in. I'm here to tell you, I, bro, I, I do this. I really, <laughs> I, got, I get to see this shit. These people are grandfathered in. They don't have a degree. They don't have none of the shit they tell us that we need. But y'all want to talk about oh, black folks always got their hand out. Nigga, we worked for 500 fucking years and counting for You want to talk about handout, nigga? Let's hand talk out. about fucking slavery, nigga. Let's talk about fucking the exploitation of Africans worldwide for the past 500 plus fucking years. You want to talk about a fucking handout? A handout is fucking, what's that nigga name? Elon Musk, nigga. That motherfucker getting a fucking, his, his parents owning a fucking cobalt mine or some shit in South Africa. I don't know what type of mine they had, but they had some type of fucking mine, nigga. You think uh, Elon Musk just come out of fucking blue, bro? Nah, nigga. His family... Literally benefited off of fucking apartheid, nigga. That's why he's a fucking billionaire, trillionaire, whatever the fuck he is now. That's what it is, bro. We still, we gonna stop talking like this. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, it's hard not to get angry though. Like like that. That's the part that really like throws me off when people are like, oh, they care about black people so much, black power, black excellence, but don't do nothing but exploit the black working class. How you how you a billionaire? You care about black black power, and you got people making below minimum wage or minimum wage. You got all that damn money. For you have you have enough money for lifetimes, for lifetimes. That's again because I'm gonna choose my vacation over your livelihood. I'm gonna choose my Bentley over your livelihood. I'm gonna choose my helicopter over your livelihood. I'm gonna choose, choose my, my mansion houses. over your livelihood, nigga. That's what I'm gonna do in the name of black excellence in the name of black power. This shit got me fired up. Hey, <laughs> black brunch. <laughs> And I be I be wondering like these niggas don't these niggas don't know poverty these niggas don't know poverty you know what I'm saying like I, I come from this shit bro I, I, these niggas don't know poverty bro these niggas don't know poverty is the reason why I move the way I move bro it's the reason why I'm ready to give it all up and I wish if it wasn't for this summer I wouldn't have as much money as I got saved up I'd be ready to give a lot more away that's real shit but the way that niggas come at niggas I need to have lawyer fees and all type of shit put up at any given moment niggas then lost jobs all type of shit you know what I'm saying. But nigga, I'm ready to give it all up. Ready to give it all up, bro, to take care of my people. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I got seven younger siblings, a grandma that's poor as fuck, living in a fucking house that my grandpa built 70 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is ready to really take care of people. If I can do that with my shit, still find a way to make money and put it into the community, still find a way to organize 40 hours a week, still find a way to put my money into my people. I'm not saying like, I take my siblings to va- on vacations for sure. For sure, but I ain't living. In, I'm not also living in a fucking mansion while I do so. It's a way to cut back and organize your life in a way that allows you to live fully, your people to live fully, and to contribute to the liberation of Black folks. And living in excess is not one of those ways. Having ten bedroom mansions is not is not one of those ways. Having seven cars is not one of those ways. Starting businesses and paying motherfuckers ten dollars an hour is not one of those ways. I'm, that's, it, it don't go that way. We got to call a spade a spade. Uh, it's just it, it, that's not how it works, my nigga. Judge people power. by their actions, bro. Judge Not people right. by their actions. Don't let this shit get co-opted. Hella black. <laughs>